One more time, uh, we warmly welcome you to our homily for today, the 16th of February, as we reflect on the loss of divine vision under the broader theme of the failure of priesthood among the Israelites. May we pray as we begin. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for your word, which remains true all the time. As we share this word today, would you speak to our hearts, O oh Lord, and encourage us to see you clearly as you are. And so as I share this word, may the anointing of God flow through the airwaves, and may you speak to each one of us in the most profound way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, it's my great pleasure to carry on our reflection today. Yesterday, we reflected on complacency, and we said that complacency is lowering God's standards. It is compromising. And we observed that Israelites compromised at two levels. Level number one, we said that they lowered the standards of God. What God expected of them, they did not live up to it, but they lowered that standard. And we cautioned ourselves and said that should we never ever lower the standards of God but live up to it. Secondly, we said that they, they were complacent because of their selfish interests. They wanted to elevate their personal interests over and above the perfect will of God. And we cautioned ourselves again and said that Come what may, may we always subjugate our selfish interests under the sovereign, perfect will of God. Today, we reflect on the topic, the loss of divine vision. <clears throat> vision, on the one hand, is the ability to see clearly with our physical eyes. But, from a spiritual perspective, it's the ability to discern from the heart what God is. So it's the ability to see God with our physical eyes, but also to see God, quote unquote, with our hearts, to be able to connect with what God wants. Many times as a people, we fail to see God, especially from a heart to heart connection. And being a people of God, at the very core of it requires that we develop the ability to see God. In Isaiah, Chapter 6, the Bible says that in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Seeing God here means tapping into his vision. is seeing the very precious things that the Lord sees and beholding the things that matter to him. It is having a deeper connection with God at a very personal level. It means shifting our focus from the things of this world and being crowded by the priority of God. The priests in the book of Malachi lost that vision. And they decided then to be seeing things the way they could see with their, with their, with their human eyes, which were completely out of touch with what God wanted. There are, there are about four ways in which we can lose the vision of God. Number one is losing the vision <clears throat> of God's love. In Malachi chapter 1 verse 2, we hear the mourning <clears throat> from the priests. Excuse me. They, the Lord says, I have loved you, says the Lord. But you ask, how have you loved us? You see, the Lord loves them, but they're still questioning and poking holes on the love of God. When we lose the vision of who God is, when we lose the vision of a heart-to-heart -heart connection with God, then we cannot understand his love. So the vision of his love completely falls through the cracks. And what we do is that we end up complaining every time and only see negative things. If you're a believer who only sees bad things, terrible situations, dark moments, you need to go back to the drawing board. After searching yourselves and considering your ways and asking, have I lost the vision 
of God. The second way in which we lose divine vision is by missing the vision of God's priority. That is his laws and his word. Again, the priests were the custodians of the laws of God. They completely disregarded the laws of God and bent those laws by allowing unqualified animals to be offered as for sacrifices. It means allowing everything to go, everything fits, when we fail to see and to hold with the seriousness it deserves the priority of God. The focus then becomes other things and not God. <clears throat> when we love the things of this world, then our lives are in trouble because God becomes secondary to the things that we do. Let me tell you, it's so easy, especially in our difficult economic times, to find the allures of this world so enticing to us. A good paying job that means you compromise the standards of God. It, it's so easy to take up a job that will cause you to even do nasty things regardless of your faith as a believer. And so Jesus asks in Matthew chapter 16 verse 26, what shall it benefit a man if he loses his soul and gains the whole world? We, we are in this consumerist uh, generation that elevates owning things over the rule of God. We want things. We want good car. We want a big house. We want, we want everything nice and latest. Nothing bad with those things. But if they come at the expense of losing the vision of the priority of God, then there's a big problem. And so we, we lose the vision of God when we lose the focus of his priority. The third way in which we lose the vision of God is when we lose the vision of of the holiness of God. In chapter 1 of Malachi, verse 13 and 14, we see the children uh, of Israel bringing animals that are completely um, out of scope. They sacrificed blemished animals, yet God had commanded them to only bring unblemished animals. And blemish and unblemish here means the ones that are defiled and the ones that are not defiled. Unblemished are the undefiled ones. Blemished are the defiled ones. And those two terms represent the holiness of God. And so when we don't see the holiness of God as something so big and so important, then we will not care what comes around us. We end up justifying every wrongdoing and saying, oh, you know, oh, you know, you know I'm a human being and this body is just flesh. You know, um, I am prone to making mistakes, which is okay. But unfortunately, many times we use those terminologies and excuses to justify a deliberate and a recurring character and pattern of sinning because we have lost the holiness of God. The fear of the Lord that makes you tremble at the thought, let alone the doing of sin. The fourth way in which we lose the vision of God is by losing the vision of what it means to be the children of God. In Exodus chapter 19 verse 6, God had referred to Israel as a royal priesthood, as a precious possession, which Peter repeats in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that you are for me a royal priesthood, meaning we hold a distinguished position as children of God, very distinguished and highly elevated. But the moment we lose the vision of what it means to be God's child, then everything now goes. It's so easy then for sin to permeate our day-to-day -day lives. And that, as we shared the other day, contributes to us lowering the standards of God. 
we end up losing the wonder of what it means to be a believer. The wonder of what it means that Jesus Christ saved me, that he died on the cross for me. That wonder goes completely away. It is called the loss of divine vision, where the supernatural becomes the commonplace, where the passion completely runs through the window. If you're a priest like me, then ministry becomes mechanical. There is no place to connect with the Lord at the place of prayer. We neglect our personal relationships with the Lord. I pray today, beloved, number one, that you will develop a sharp vision for the love of God. But number two, that you will develop a sharp vision for the priority of God. Number three, that you will develop a very sharp and contagious vision for the holiness of God. And number four, that you will develop an undisputable and compromisable vision of what it means to be a child of God. When we do so, then the Lord opens our eyes and we see the glory that fills his throne. As, I saw, as Isaiah did, <coughs> excuse me, in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, when he saw the glory of the Lord after the Lord opened his eyes. I pray that you will confess your sins to the Lord and the Lord will then open your eyes to behold the vision of who he is and that that will drive your commitment to walk with him correctly at all times, regardless of what comes your way. May the Lord bless you, beloved, even as we charge forward as priests in the vineyard of the Lord. May we pray. Precious Father, speak to our hearts. Bless us more and more, even from this sharing. May you cause us to be a people who uphold the sanctity of your name and the person of who you are. So be blessed and exalted, even as you attend to our needs for today. Keep us at the very center of your will. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>